Google Pest Control Marketer Grow your business like never before Call 770-993-0004 Well, hello, folks. This is Hal Coleman, better known as Mr. Offline, and I'm here with Mike Stewart, better known as Mr. Online. And we're here to bring you another episode of Pest Control Marketing Live and the Pest Control Marketing Podcast, the only live streaming show that anywhere in the world that either of us knows about. It's totally dedicated to helping you, the PCOs and WCOs out there, uh, get more new customers, make more sales, and grow your business. So, with that said, Mike, I'm ready for another episode. I always look forward to this. Hey. It's, 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 you know, it amazes me how I tell all my clients um, in all kinds of businesses that the number two best way to get a, a, a solid presence on the internet is with content creation. And this system that you and I have been developing with this software called, uh, I'm going to put the link up here, joinstreamyard.com. This enables me, I, I, I'm not even in my home. I'm in a friend's office here in Florida kind of semi on vacation, but you with a, with a, a computer or a laptop or even a cell phone, you can create amazing television content live recorded with no editing skills. And, and I, I'll tell you something, live streaming strategies should be required of every business. So, uh, you know, you and I sit here, it's clear as a bell. I can, I can see your office there, your guitar behind you, all your bugs on the wall. Uh, 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 honor the guy. Oh, see, oh, he's over there. You, that right there. That guy. That's yeah. my buddy Daniel Hall. And uh, uh, he's hanging on his wall here. But, uh, you know, you, you got an internet connection. You've got an ability to, to build the content that builds the uh, presence. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do. In fact, we, we had a little hiatus of our podcast. I'll fess up. And our, our listeners said, hey, you haven't done a podcast in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is, is you build an audience and you give them good content, you build relationships. So that's what we're here to do today is uh, you've got a subject you want to talk about. And I think it's a subject that you have a little more expertise because it's, it's really an offline strategy. So I'm going to let you start talking about it because it's everything we talk about is the thousand little things that make a difference. A thousand little things. And this is one more of those thousand little. And you know, Mike, with each one of those thousand little things, pick one of those thousand little things. And there's a thousand little things you need to know about it. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, it's like the cellular makeup of a living organism. It's just, it never ends. But the deeper you go, the more successful you are. And uh, what I want to talk about today is something that uh, turns a lot of people off when they first hear it. And I've been talking about it because years ago, it used to turn me off before I got turned on to direct response marketing in my pre Larry Latimer days. And before my mind was awakened to the fact that there was so much I didn't know about selling and marketing. I had it all wrong in my head for so many years, but uh, <clears throat> thanks to him and thanks to you and uh, some other mentors in my life over the past 20, 25 years, I guess, especially the last 20 years, uh, I've kind of done a complete turnaround. But what I want to talk about is scripted sales presentations. Scripted sales presentation. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I hate scripted sales presentations. I hate it when people come try to sell me something using a scripted presentation. Well, here's the thing. If you hate them, it's probably because you never had a good one. Or if you had a good one, you didn't learn how to use it. You didn't learn it effectively. So, uh and if and when you say I hate it when somebody tries to sell me something using a scripted presentation, if you know that it's a if you can tell that it's a scripted presentation, they certainly don't know how to use it. Uh, that is uh, uh, a fact. So 
Uh, Larry, La I'm going to share a story with you, Mike, about Larry Latimer. Uh, you know, we got so many Larry stories, but when he was first began talking to me about scripted presentations, he said, uh, <clears throat> if anybody can tell that it's scripted, he said, you, you've just, you failed. You don't know what you're doing with, you got to learn it and learn how to deliver it like an actor. Uh, you know, we go see a movie. Uh, I think the uh, Academy Awards were on a while back and people were getting awards for all kind of great movies. You know, you can go watch a movie and uh, it, it make you cry or it can make you laugh or it can make you so angry you want to put your fist through the wall or it can uh, scare the, the jeepers out of you. And you sit there just enthralled with this movie. You can't take, you can't. In some movies, some of my favorite movies like The, the Godfather and Lonesome Dove and some of these classics, I've watched them over and over and over again. I never get tired of them. But you know what? It's all scripted. It's every line in those movies is a script. It's called the script. And those actors take it and they learn it and they talk about it. And when that camera goes on and that director says action, man, they do it. They make you believe it is real. You get drawn into it and you're, you're, you, you know, things, some of these movies like Yellowstone right now is, is so popular with people. They can't wait till the next episode, but the whole thing is scripted. It's not real. None of it's real. It's scripted. But those people deliver stellar performances with those lines they're given. They study the lines and the best way to deliver them. And they make you believe it. And that's what you have to do with the script. I, with my clients, I write scripts for them all the time. And uh, and they use them. And, and I had, uh, I'm, I'm thinking back to one client several years ago in particular, his, his, uh, uh, daughter ran, worked in his office answering the phone. So, uh, you know, she, she didn't know much about selling and she was just answering people's questions and they would call and sometimes they'd do business with them. Sometimes they would say, well, I'm going to check around. I'll call you back. So, okay. They usually don't ever call back under those circumstances, but I, I gave her a good script. I said, when somebody calls, <clears throat> Uh, at some point in the conversation, you got to say this to them. You got to, these four things you have to say and don't let them off the phone without, you know, telling them these things. And so, uh, she tried that for about a month and then we had our next coaching call and, <clears throat> uh, she only had two words to say about it. It works. It works. She she was so empowered by the when she saw that it does work and and it causes people. See, people are looking for somebody to do business with if they've got a problem. They've got a pest problem, termite problem, rodent problem, groundhog problem, bats in the attic, whatever they're, they're looking for somebody to help them solve it. And it's not a pleasant thing to do when somebody has a problem and they have to find somebody to solve it. You know, I had a pipe rupture in my basement a few years ago, about 11 o'clock at night. My wife and I heard this noise. Said, what is that? What's that weird noise? I said, it sounds like it's coming from the basement. I went down the basement and this pipe had just ruptured water was spraying, uh, making a loud noise. So here I am panicking. We got to find somebody. And I don't, I didn't know a plumber really. I didn't have a relationship with one. And this anxiety set in, I said, oh, golly, I don't know anybody who to call. So I have to go and Google it and, find somebody that offered 24 hour service and got them out here. Uh, and then I, it's just, a, it's, it's when you have to solve a problem like that, it's not fun. 
it's it causes anxiety and stress and doubt and everything else and so you're looking to get it solved quickly and make a decision quickly somebody to help you and a really somebody who has a really good script which is designed to answer all of your questions all of your handle all of your objections all of your questions it's designed to put you at ease it's designed to make you feel good about making the choice to hire this person and 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 uh, it ends the problem the journey is over you have found somebody that you can say yes to and feel good about saying yes to them and you just feel the anxiety drift away because oh, whew, and I'm glad to get that out of the way. I've now I've hired now I've been able to hire somebody, and they're coming out here to get rid of my bugs. They're coming out here to solve my problem, and I feel good about it. I feel good about them, and I like what they had to say. And they they answered all my questions. You know, they just uh, man, they were so right on with everything I needed to hear. That's what a good script does, and it has it's it's uh, if you have one and you learn it and can deliver it well uh, at the right time. It just makes it so easy for people to say yes to you. And that's what they want to do. They don't want to say, I don't know. I'm confused. I need to call somebody else. I need to check around. Let me think about it. All of these things that are, are signs of cognitive dissonance that uh, you've gotten them into a state of that with a with a rambling presentation or things you said things you didn't say things you said and then something else you said that without even knowing it conflicted with the other thing you said and now their subconscious mind is scrambled and it says oh you know there's a saying we have that uh, a confused mind always says no a confused mind does nothing uh, that's it, it's in, uh, unable to decide that's called cognitive dissonance it just kind of it's conflicting signals, conflicting messages, uh, conflicting values. And so it just doesn't do anything. But if you have a great script, it avoids all of those things. It handles them scientifically uh, and emotionally. And so it just makes it so easy for a person to say yes. And that's what they want. They want to say yes to somebody and get this over with. Don't make me have to go call somebody else. And then when they leave, I'm more confused than I was. And then I got to go call somebody else. And then I've got to talk to my spouse and try to explain all of this, which I, I can't do. I don't want to do. I'm going to get it all confused. Now they're really going to be confused and ask me questions that I can't answer. So please, some salesperson out there, come along and, and just make it easy for me. Solve this problem, this search for me. Let me just say yes to you and get you out here and handle my problem and make me feel good and take this burden off of me, please. That's what that's what they're looking for. And and uh, if you have a great script that just deals with all of these issues in such a great way, that script is a great tool and it will make the sales for you. But people just hate him. You know, Larry. Larry Latimer, a uh, mentor of mine and Mike's, uh, Larry passed away, uh, yeah, probably 10 years ago now. It's amazing. It's been that long. But Larry was telling me the story about uh, he had an ad agency and he wanted to do business with this dealer, this automobile dealership. They had contacted him and uh, they wanted to do this big ad campaign. It was like $150,000 or something at the time. That was a lot of money. And still is a lot of money, but, uh, so they were interviewing ad agencies and, and Larry, the king of script writers. I mean, he was the master at it. He was a songwriter. He was a successful hit songwriter, uh, and wrote sales presentations for tons of businesses and scripts. And, uh, he, he taught me, you know, so much about it, but Larry said that, he went in and talked with this guy, you know, gave him a presentation. The guy said, you know, I'm interviewing, I'm actually interviewing uh, three or four agencies and then I'm going to make my decision. And so to make a long story short, Larry said, the guy called him uh, 
He said, I, I want you to come back in. And you call him a week later and said, can you come by this afternoon for just a few minutes? I need to talk with you about something. Larry said, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll be there. So we went by and he said, the guy, Larry sat down and the guy said, I didn't want to tell you this over the phone. I just want to tell you in person. He said, but we, we talked about it and we've chosen you. He said, I, I want to do business with you. So congratulations. He said, uh, I'm going to give you my contract and we're going to do business together. And Larry said, oh man, that's just great. That's just great. And the guy said, now you want to know why I chose you instead of those other guys? He said, I sure do. He said, I can't wait to hear why. And the guy said, cause you're the only one uh, that didn't come in here uh, and use a scripted presentation. And Larry said, really? He said, yep. All the other guys just had these scripted presentations, but you came in here and you didn't have one. And Larry said, you mean like when I said, yada, 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 yada. And they said, the guy's mouth just fell open. He said, you're kidding me. And Larry said, no. He said, I don't do anything that's not scripted. So Larry's, the guy said, you're the only one that didn't have a scripted presentation. And that Larry actually had the best scripted presentation. So that's how powerful it is. Now, if you don't have one and you just people say, well, I don't I don't use a scripted presentation. I just speak from the heart. I just speak from emotion. I just try to connect. Well, that's OK sometimes. And sometimes it's not. On some days you don't feel like connecting and you're not connectable. Some days you're on. Some days you're off. Some days you say the right things. Some days you say the wrong things. Uh, if you're just winging it, uh, you know, it's like shooting a rifle with no sights on it. You're just, some days it's windy and some days it's not, it, you, you, you're not going to hit your target, uh, every time if you don't have really, really good sights and know how to use them. And that's what a script is all about. So, uh, I just wanted to, uh, talk about that today, Mike, because, uh, here again, I, uh, when people get into my coaching program, they, ex they're going to ex expect to get scripts. I'm really big on them and they see them and they use them. Uh, I had a guy one time, or this is a guy who's been in my program now for about five or six years. I can't even remember, uh, how long it's been, uh, uh, Fred, you know, when he's both of our clients and great guy. And, and he, uh, Oh, it's been a couple of years ago, I guess. And Fred's probably listening to this podcast and smiling right now, but I know he doesn't mind me telling you this story, but he, he, uh, I asked him how, how it was going. This was during termite season. I think he said, well, I'm doing good. He said, I had, uh, made like, uh, 12 proposals last week and I closed seven of them i think he said or so i said what you close he said yeah i, I, I said fred that's not good man you you're better than that you can close you should have closed a lot higher percentage than that well, what do you think the problem is i don't know i said well yeah you well come on if you did know what would it be what do you think the problem is he said, well i just he said i tend to get distracted when i'm out there and i get and i don't use my script I said, you don't use your script. He said, no. And he said, sometimes when I'm leaving their house, I say, I think to myself, you know, I didn't use my script when I was out there. And uh, he said, I, but I just get distracted. And I said, well, I know, I know how that is. But I said, so this next month, I want you to use the script every time. And, and so advanced to the next month's call. I said, how'd it go? He said, well, I got to, I had, I had 10, uh, termite uh, proposals and he said I closed eight of them I said so she, you went from about 55 or 60 percent up to 80 percent uh, he said yep I said what's the difference he said I use my script every time so I had him take a piece of tape and put on his clipboard stay on script tape it on the dashboard of the truck stay on script so that when he pulls in the driveway and is walking around, there's that reminder right in front of him, stay on script. Scripts just work. And uh, 
but uh, we don't we don't like them because it takes work to learn it and discipline. And so, if you if you uh, if you have a good script, it'll make you a lot of money, and it will make your your prospects uh, grateful to you because you were able to put their mind at ease and solve their problem and making it easy to say yes. You just made it so easy to say yes. And they're, they're grateful and you owe it to them. You owe it to your, to your prospects. You know, I, I ask people this question a lot, Mike, I say, do you think you're the best pest control company that somebody could deal with? And they say, yeah. I said, do you really? Not, not tell me. Do you think somebody would be better off going with one of the big national companies, you know, or the other boys down on the corner or whatever than you? Or do you think you're better than all of them and, and will give customers better deal? They say, well, I definitely think I'm better. Absolutely, I do. I say, good, because if you don't think you're the best, you need to go find something else to do. But if you think you're the best and you're going to give people more value for the dollar and you're going to treat them better than the other people and, and you're going to provide a higher level of customer service and expertise than the other people, then I believe that you have a moral obligation to that person to convince them to do business with you, to use every tool, every, uh, uh, of course, you, you never tell anybody anything that's not true. Never, 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 ever. Uh, you be perfectly honest with people, but you have to learn sales strategies and using scripts and psychological communication. You know, the, the buying decisions made in the subconscious mind is not made in the conscious mind, like most people think. So you need to learn how to speak to the people's subconscious and not to their conscious mind. And when, you, and when you learn how to do these things, your closing rate just increases and you learn how to make it almost irresistible to people to do business with you. When you have a moral obligation to do that, if you think you're the best, then why let them, why let them walk away and go spend their money and hire somebody that's not as good as you are? Maybe somebody that's not nearly as good as you are. Why would you do that? Why would you allow a, a prospect to walk away from you and go hire somebody else? Who'd say, well, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to use any kind of persuasive techniques or anything. You know, I let them make up their own mind. Uh, that's the biggest cop out I've ever heard. It's just because you don't know what to do and you don't want to learn what to do. Uh, and you, you, have all of these preconceived negative notions in your head about selling. You know, there are a lot of people out there, Mike, that I talk to that are in, that own small businesses. I talk to people in the pest control business who come out and tell you they hate salespeople. Well, you know what? People who, it, it, that's the way it is with wealth. There are some people who think that all rich people are crooks. But, you know, people that think all rich people are crooks, don't have any money and they never will ever have any money because they have this negative connotation attached to wealth. And so people that, that hate salespeople and despise salespeople and all, they never, they're not very good salespeople. And they never will be good salespeople until they learn to love selling and love what they do and see the value in what they do. Uh, salespeople, it's the most noble profession there is to me because you help people. You help steer people in the right direction uh, and, and help them avoid going to the wrong place and making the wrong decision. That's the way I look at it. So, so uh, there are all kinds of techniques and tools to help you become a better salesperson. And a good script is just one of those. But it will help you and it will help the prospect. It helps them. And you owe it to them. Uh, don't don't cop out and say, well, I, they'll hire me if they want to. If they don't, they don't. That's just a cop out. And it allows them to go in many cases to go off and make a bad decision and hire somebody that's not going to take care of nearly as good as you do. So uh, I hope that uh, that if you're listening to this, you take this to heart and ask yourself the question. 
do I love selling? If, if you don't and you hate selling, you better hire a good salesperson because you're not ever going to, you're not ever going to grow nearly as fast as you could or reach your potential because selling is where it all begins. You don't have a customer until, until you sell something. And, uh, uh, and, and they don't have a service provider until they buy something. So if you think you're the best, if you really do, you look in the mirror and say, I'm the best at what I do. I'm proud of what I do and how I take care of my customers. Then you need to be able to provide yourself and your service to a lot more people. Don't let them walk away and go hire somebody else. That's doing them a great disservice and it's doing yourself a disservice also. Uh, by not being able to help them. So Mike, uh, I, I, give me your comments on this. Tell, tell me what you're thinking right now. Uh, am I wrong to think that we have a moral obligation to sell our services? I can't hear you. You have to click a button. I, 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 I muted it so I wouldn't interrupt your words of wisdom. Oh, I understand. No, we got you now. Okay. Now, um, there were speakers that I used to hear when I used to speak at internet marketing seminars that said, you are doing a moral, um, dist, what's what was the word he used? Injustice. Injustice, disservice. You are hurting people. If you have information that could change their lives, it is your moral obligation to get paid to share information that works and helps people and or solves their problem. In the case of, of, of pest control, that's a service business. It solves a very uh, uh, obvious problem. Nobody wants to live with bugs. There's a thousand reasons why bugs are no good. You know, if people enjoyed living with bugs, they wouldn't need pest control. But nobody wants uh, germ-infested uh, rodents and bugs living, uh, you know, in their homes. So it's a problem. And the, the problem with people making a decision to buy is, do I trust that you uh, are the person to solve my problem? So you're doing a disservice to your customers if they don't know who you are and how good you are. It is your moral obligation to society to share with them the truth. Now, I don't think you should use deceptive practices to get business. That's fraud, in my opinion. But of course it is. But but when it's the truth and you solve a person's problem, you deserve to be paid and you have a right to share that information with the people that will respond to it. Everyone won't respond, but it doesn't prevent you from presenting the truth uh, to the potential customer. So um, one of the people one of the things that people challenge with is conveying that truth. And that's why a consistent, proven, scripted sales presentation uh, in my world is sales copy. The psychology of saying the right words consistently can be the difference between a sale and not getting a sale. So winging it when you're out there doing, you know, you're doing sales copy when Mr. Jones says, I have roaches, why should I hire you? And if you don't do it consistently with the proven words that turn prospects with a problem into a paid customer, you're, you're cheating them and you're cheating yourself. So yeah. I couldn't agree more. These are the thousand little things that make the difference between successful people and people who aren't successful. That's why sales copy, um, one of the things about a website or a video or an audio, it says it the same way over and over and over and over again. It never changes. But when you're in the real world and you're working from your brain, you you either memorize something that so that you're consistent or you get so good at it that you know the information that you do it in the right sequence. Saying the wrong thing at the wrong time can mean the difference between getting a customer and not getting a customer. So, so wing, winging it is not a good idea. And like you said with the lady who said, okay, I'll try it. And now I'm excited because it works. Well, it, it works. I remember Larry, when he used to work for a telemarketing company, they would tweak scripts and split test them to see which script performed better over a number of samples. And, and when they found that a script worked better, they would switch into that script. And then they would try another script and see if they could outdo that one. And that's called um, 
you know, uh, um, split testing. And there's the thing called Taguchi testing where you're doing multiple uh, variables to see what performs. But there is a science. In fact, I, I, I tell people, if you've never read scientific advertising, if you've never read that by Claude Hopkins, go to scientificadvertising.com and get the free download of a 100-year-old book where this man did the research and the science of the psychology of saying the right words to get the sale. And that, that's what a scripted sales presentation is. It's the right words to get the sale. And if you, if you say the wrong words, you could, you, could, you could send somebody down a rabbit hole of going, they're already, you know, you're sitting there talking and thinking, I don't trust this guy. I don't want to do business with this person. Oh, this person doesn't sound like they're a pro. I, th- this, this turns me off. And something doesn't feel right about this guy. You don't want those thought processes going on. You want that guy saying yes over and over in his mind. Oh, this guy seems like it, they seem like they're a really good company. It looks like they, th- this problem is, is a, a breeze for them. They're, they're going to be cognizant of my pets. Uh, they're not going to destroy my home with dirt and, and, and uh, they're going to clean up after they go. And, and they guarantee they do risk reversal. They guarantee what they do. And I mean, you're giving all these things that get yeses. And uh, eventually, you know, I remember Larry one time said the close is, well, what did so-and-so say? Yes. What did so-and-so say? Yes. Yeah. Well, what are you going to say? And he said, shut up. Don't, don't say a word. You'll screw it up if you say another word. Yeah. And and you, you'd almost have to be nuts not to say yes, because it was a compelling argument. Yeah. Uh, and, and so a scripted sales presentation is obviously uh, something that, that if you don't know what to write, that's why I'm going to put this up here on the screen for people who can see. Call Hal. Hal is a pro at saying the right words in the right order at the right time to get the yeses in the subconscious of the prospect. So how do you get a hold of Hal and let him spend an hour with you for free? No obligation, no bait and switch, no tricks. Just call 770-993-0004. That's triple zero four seven seven zero. 993-0004 and ask for how and set up a time to let him look at what you're doing and what you're not doing. And when you make these thousand little thing changes, little by little, it starts to make a growth. A uh, buddy of mine recently said, what you want to do is move the needle in the right direction. You want to keep, just keep, you don't expect miracles overnight, but consistency and persistence of doing a thousand little different things that you're not doing can, can be better than I call it the Forrest Gump business approach. You're just like a feather floating on a cloud, hoping that you get in the right place, just floating around in the air. You don't know where you're going, but you just know you're going to get up in the morning and float around some more. You can't do it like that. You need to take the bull by the horns and start learning what these thousand little things are. And one of the thousand little things is, If you're not using scripted sales presentations, if your salespeople are not using scripted sales presentations, you're missing the boat. You you know, one of the, how do you know what one of the most successful scripted sales presentations applications is in the world? Something that a lot of us hate, but they work. Multi, multi MLMs, multi-level marketing. When they build, they tell, they teach, don't vary from the script. We have built a template that if you do exactly what we say, you will build what your organization and you will, you will make money. Yeah. Okay. And most people don't do it. So anyway, script yeah, is... Larry, Larry, okay. Larry told me a story one time about... Uh, and I love telling Larry stories, okay? Yeah, it's I love Larry. Old movies. I, I just never get tired of talking about Larry. But he said that how he was uh, working for... I think it was MetLife Insurance, some insurance company, and uh, which he for many many years he did, and then began writing scripts for him and everything else. But he said they had that uh, uh, they hired this young guy, didn't have any experience really, and they put him out there. And he said, "Now your goal was to have five sales calls a day, and they, they did it all from just calling phone books and everything, talking to people." cold calling, telemarketing. 
going around the community, talk, just introducing themselves. And But your goal was to have five appointments a day. And he said, if you could close three of those five every day, you could make a really good living selling life insurance. And he said, if you could close four out of five, you could get rich. And he said, if you could only close two out of five, you were going to have to find another line of work. You just wouldn't be able to make it. So they hired this this guy and uh, put him out there. And he was doing pretty good at first. And then his sales after a few months just slacked off. And and uh, the, the Larry's manager called him and said, what's going on with the Joe over there, man. What's, I'm looking at his numbers. He's, his sales have kind of slumped. You know, what's going on with him? Larry said, I don't know. He said, I'll, I've noticed that too. He said, I'll talk with him. And and uh, Larry said, I'm going to ride with him. I'm going to set up a day this week to ride with him. And I'll just observe him and talk with him and everything else. So Larry said that uh, rode with the guy and the guy, first thing he looked at is the guy using the script. And he said the guy used the script perfectly all day that day in just five appointments. And he closed three appointments that day. And so Larry called his boss back, said, I rode with him. And he, he seems to be doing everything right. He's using the script really well. He's saying the right stuff. And he closed three sales today. He said, I don't know. So the guy's sales continued. To, he didn't close three, you know, for a while there. So they Larry brought him in finally, put him under the spotlight, you know, feeding him saltines, try to <laughs> grill him, get the answers from him. Mm -hmm. And he said the guys, it turned out the guy admitted that when nobody was with him, he didn't use the script. Well, there you go. Larry said, why do you not use the script? He said, I, I, I did use it, but he said, it just doesn't sound like something I would say. He it's said, I, I, I don't feel comfortable to say it. So here again, success is about learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Do what you fear. Do what you fear. And the guy simply didn't feel comfortable using somebody else's words. So he just didn't use them. And he, and when he used them, he said, I know when I use them, my, my sales go up. But he said, I just don't, I just don't like it. I just don't. Like it. It. So there you go. We get into these hypnotic rhythms. We need to do a podcast on hypnotic rhythms too. But that guy was definitely in a hypnotic rhythm. That he couldn't break out of. But yeah. anyway, enough said. And folks, call Mike Stewart. If you want to talk about your on your online presence and your online marketing and your website and uh, generating more leads and more new customers from the world of the uh, internet, you need to call Mike and and have a conversation. Let him look at your website, see what you're doing. Uh, he'll review all of it and he'll be honest with you. He'll be straightforward and you won't owe him a dime. And if you want him to tell you about his coaching and what he can do for you, he'll tell you. And if you don't want him to, he won't just uh, uh, take him up on that because you have absolutely nothing to lose except lots of new customers. So call Mike 770-826-3662, 770-826-3662. My phone's ringing here, Mike. That's not you calling me, is it? No, I hope that's. But uh, anyway, uh, and and take Mike up on his offer. Have a conversation. It'll be well worth it. You'll 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 come off of that call saying, "Man, I am glad I called that guy." And uh, so anyway, with that said, Mike, uh, I think we've covered it pretty well. And folks, I want to thank you for being here with us and joining us for another episode of Pest Control Marketing Dot Live. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. 
For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him, Mike, at InternetAudioGuy.com. Google Pest Control. Marketer, grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004.